Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining me again. This is Tim Laskus, and you're listening to The Tim Laskus Show. This is episode 94 with Cardiff D. Hall, and he talks about planning strategies that are incredible. All of you need to listen up because I know they're going to be helpful. Cardiff founded the Inspiration Insight back in 2015 with the ultimate goal of transforming lives and developing a social media platform to amplify his messages. Now, through his company, his writing, his speaking engagements, and personal coaching sessions, he inspires people to direct the cause of their lives rather than letting life happen to them. Hey, makes sense to me. You know, be proactive. And so he gives, he's just a fun guy, a fun interview, lots of energy, loves to laugh. And so I really enjoyed this one, and I think you will too. So enjoy. The Tim Laska Show, in search of entrepreneurial gold. Tim digs deep into the minds of his guests, entertaining, down to earth, and informative. Now, here's your host, Tim Laskus. Hey, Cardiff. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, I just jumped right in there, man. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, well, I'm excited too. You know, we're feeding off each other's energy. Yes. And on all that fun stuff. Now, you're just telling me you run around and, and, and are you doing cardio or doing some kind yeah. of, what, what kind of activities are you doing out there that, that gives you so much energy? Oh my gosh. Well, I started to take a look at CrossFit and I had my neighbor, he's a CrossFit a guru or workout person and he he conned me into coming over to his gym so i i i i said fine i'll do you a favor i came over and he said okay we're gonna put the timer on tim and we're gonna just judge you and see how many you know sit-ups you can do um squats you can do and pull-ups you can do oh that's that's a piece of cake <laughs> i i was huffing and puffing, and I think I'm pretty fit, but CrossFit is a different type of training, and that's what I do for fun. So I, I do CrossFit training for fun, and I do things that are really going to get my heart rate up, get me sweating, get me pumped, and when I leave the gym, I am sky high. Well, I think you must have just come back from the gym because you were you got, or either that you drank a Red Bull or something, man. You got no, some man. Energy. This is no. <laughs> you know what? Uh, this is me. This is who I am. And uh, for those uh, listeners, um, if you you've listened to some other thing, shows that I've been on, this is this is who you get. This is Cardiff D Hall, and uh, I am so honored to be here with you, Tim. Well, that's excellent. Well, it's a it's a pleasure to, to have you on the show and tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. What are you doing yeah. professionally these days? Yeah, so I have been in corporate America. I am I'm a, I'm a corporate, I guess, call me executive if you want. I don't like that term, but uh, I'm in corporate America. I'm in sales for the last 25 years. Just recently, I launched my first book into this space of entrepreneurship, and uh, I've been doing my side passion, and it's turned into a really a deep passion of mine. And currently what I'm doing is I help individuals really gain clarity, uh, increase their confidence, um, increase their competence so they can achieve. All of my clients are budding entrepreneurs. They're in this entrepreneur entrepreneur space, and I'm helping every one of them get clarity and, and really take their brand and their message, whatever their business is, to another level. So you could take someone like me who's incompetent with a Rinky Dink podcast show and you, and you can just turn me into... <laughs> something you know, into gold. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, lost uh, I don't have that magic fairy one. I don't have the magic fairy one, but, <laughs> but we, what we, we dive into where all of these, the lies that we tell ourselves, the, the, the self limiting beliefs. So I work hard on mindset. We look at uh, time management is, is a big thing that we, we talk about. We, we look at, we study. We, and so those are like two things that we focus in on when I work with my clients and um, looking at, you know, how do I make this a must do instead of, well, it, it, I don't, it, I, there's, I may not get to it. So we talk about those things. We dive in deeper because there's always a deeper meaning. Once we go a little bit deeper and if we're willing to go there, that we begin to truly understand ourselves and how we work and how to change our habits to lead us to success. What are some of those mindset hiccups that people have? Oh man, some of them are, I can't do this, or I, I don't know how to, right? And 
that's what stops a lot of entrepreneurs. A lot of us get stopped by saying, you know, I, I don't know how, so uh, I'll do something else. And I'm working with one client right now who she wanted me to help her think bigger. And so uh, she's in the culinary space. And so she is taking her online business, her uh, you know chef business, and she's going to start a cafe in 2021. And so we're already focused. 2018 isn't here yet, but we, we as a team, we're already focused and looking at the things that she needs to do today to elevate herself, to get her the ability to open up her own cafe in 2021. You see, entrepreneurs, we all get stuck like, okay, this is all I've done in my life. So this is my baseline. So once we have our baseline, if we want to do something more, we have to elevate ourselves to get to that baseline. And we have to do the work that's required within ourselves, mentally, physically, um, comp, you know, increasing our competence to reach the level. And so that's kind of what I do. That's what, that's what I help people do. Now, have you worked with anyone who, you know, initially they came to you and said, you know, Cardiff, I need to go, this is where I'm at and this is where I need to go. And then, you know, you start working on a plan and start to maybe help build that foundation. But then you realize maybe they're not so motivated and, and they really probably the way they are, they're, they're kind of stuck. <laughs> and then you're like, right. hey, we need to back up 20 steps, and yeah. fix what's going on before we can even get you on that path yeah. to reaching those goals. Yeah. Well, one of the things I do off the bat is I give all of my potential clients a little test. And for those of you that want to work with me, you're going to get a little test, <laughs> but this is what I do. I give them a little test because I want to see how hungry they are. Are they going to do the, and I don't, I'm not locking like a, this is a big test, right? Something small, right? Um, go to the, read this, read this uh, blog and let me know what you, you know, what are the three things that you can do to implement in your life today? Or, you know, call me at this specific time on this date and we'll connect, right? So I give them these things, simple things, simple things that they don't have to spend a lot of time on. And I can tell right off the bat, if they're late, if they're like, oh, I forgot to call you, Cardiff, you know, and hey, things come up. I get that. But if things are going to come up, how about the communication before to notify the person? Hey, uh, uh, Cardiff, I'm running a little bit late. I'll, I'll give you a call in 10 minutes. You see, there's a our, our, what we do speaks volumes about ourselves, but we may not even know that. And as you know, you've heard that that say, you know, uh, actions speak louder than words. It, it, it's absolutely true. So I have to be very selective who I work with because I can tell if they're not truly in the in the mood to change. Because people, again, people are on all spectrums of life. There's some people that are just fine with where they're at. They don't want to change, and that, that's great. That's good. There's people that say, no, I, I need, I, I draw the line today. I've had enough. I'm tired of it. I want to go to another level. How do I get there? Can you help me? And so I need to find out where they are before I even get to that level. And then all, I've been very blessed. So all of my clients are, they're hungry, right? And Les Brown says, you got to be hungry. That's right. I'm not Les Brown, by the way. <laughs> 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 but... You have to have this deep fire burning within. See, a coach can't do that for you. A coach can motivate you, can give you the tools and the tricks and everything else, but there must be this internal fire burning within that says, okay, my coach said I need to have this. Okay, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to I'm gonna act on it. I'm going to do this. And I can tell if someone just, they, they, they talk the game, but when I meet with them the next following month, if, that nothing really happened. Well, what happened? Right. Well, I just never got around to it. You know what? You never got around to it because it wasn't a priority and there was no emotional connectivity within your soul. Right. Let me ask you a question, Cardiff. What do you think is more powerful for people, pain or pleasure? Some people change mm. because of the pain of where they're at. They're sick yes. of being broke. They're sick of living in a rat hole. Yep. And they're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that is enough pain to get them motivated. Yes. But, or you have someone who says, you know what? I, I love to see all these pictures of these boats and people driving nice cars. And, you know, so w what should be the focus? What is more motivating? focus of the pain that you're in or the focus of the pleasure that you're going towards? Yeah, I, boy, that's a great question. 
I think it depends. <laughs> this is a classic answer, right? I saw like I'm going to sound like a politician right now, <laughs> and I'm clearly not. It, it depends on the person, and and it depends who they are. If they like the shiny object syndrome and they want to see the new nice new car, and they've got a, they've cut out the picture of the car and they've got it on their whiteboard, and everywhere they look, they they see that car. That's going to motivate that person, right? If I see someone who's like, no, in, they, they, there's this emotional connectivity they 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 just have had enough and so they're saying no tomorrow i go to the gym i got a trainer i'm going to do the work to lose the weight and they get mad at themselves and they put these negative um uh you know rewards if they don't do it so it, it truly depends you know, some people get sick and tired of their their debt and like, no, I'm going to clear this up tomorrow. I'm going to get, I'm going to get it. I'm going to handle on this. I'm going to do whatever it takes. But some others look at the shiny objects and say, you know what? I, I really want that house. How do I get a house like that? Okay. What do I need to do? How much money do I need to make? And so it has to be relatable to who that person is. Yeah, I think it's a great answer. You're right. Because as individuals, I mean, we're all so different. We, and we yes. have different drives and needs and wants and desires and, and things that, you know, get us going. And, and it's different for everyone. So, you know, and a good coach is someone who gets in there, you know, like yourself, who really finds out, okay, what makes this person tick? Yes. And then you can start to really do some work and, and help them. Yeah. Now, now, talking about time management, you know, there's a lot of people who th think that they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to have their own business. And but yet, you know, they they really function best under a boss who tells them this is when you come in. This is when you leave. This is when you go to lunch. And, you know, I when I say jump, you jump and although people may complain, but some people function best at that. What, what are some kind of tips you would have for people to kind of take control of their own kind of time management and so that they can be successful as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Well, they, you, you just nailed it. They have to know themselves. They have to be a fire starter. They have to be self starting, right? It, it, my car has this button, uh, Tim, you just push, right? You just push the button, the car yeah. starts <laughs> and there's no key when well, there's keys, but you don't use a key. And so I look at entrepreneurship as this button that you have to be able to push this button and fire up. It's like, okay, what am I going to do today? What, what, where am I going? Where, what, what problems or challenges am I facing? Who can help me? And you have to be able to figure out on your own. And for those of you that are listening, perhaps, you know what? That's who you are. You're, you start that button. You, you can fire yourself up. And there's others of us. And that's why I love the world that say, I need direction. I need someone to tell me what to do. I need someone just, I want to do this. I just need that kind of like accountability, checking with my boss. Am I doing okay? Yeah. Because when you're an entrepreneur, you're on an island by yourself, unless you have a group around you, right? That can support you and it can, it can be there with you. But for those of you that, that feel that, gosh, I've always wanted to do this. I always had this dream of mine to do whatever. I want you to look within yourself and, and ask yourself some challenging questions. What type of person am I? Am I a self-starter where, you know what? I just do things and I get things done. I really don't need to be told what to do. Or am I more of a, you know what? I'm just going to kind of take it easy on a coast, but I'm going to do my job, but uh, you know, it's okay if I don't really get it done. And, and that is going to be, I would say not a success uh, predictor, but it's going to give you an inclination. Do I really have what it takes to stand alone to be my own boss? That's what it is. I mean, yeah. entrepreneurship is you're, you're your own boss. Right, right. You know, well, and it scares me when people say, "Well, you know, I would love to work for myself, and then I could just work from home and oh. I could stay in my pajamas all day." I'm like, well, "Wait a minute, that's a red flag right there." Because yes. there's not any successful entrepreneurs out there who, at four, three o'clock in the afternoon, they're sitting around in the, the clothes they slept in. <laughs> no, they're up at five, six. <laughs> well, morning, well, here's the thing. Hours, well, you know, you ready to go yeah. and dressed, even though they're not going to a job, right. but they're ready to go. Right, and, and see they. they People love pictures, right? You see all these, oh, hey, this person's an entrepreneur. They have a yacht. Oh, this person's an entrepreneur. You know, they travel for a living. They're going to all these different wonderful places. And I want to go there. So I want to be one of them. You see, that's what they, that's what, uh, that's what this thing of entrepreneurship, like, oh, I want to be one of them. But then I'm telling you, 
I'm, I'm a living proof listener. I am a living proof. I have a corporate job. I've got a family. I've got an eight year old. I travel for a living and I have this side hustle side passion of mine. And I, and I squeeze every ounce of time that I have into this business without sacrificing my family. Because you see, my family is important. It's one of my top three priorities in my life. And so there's a lot of entrepreneurs, I would, not a lot, but there's some entrepreneurs that say, you know what? Uh, no, I'm going to, this is my thing. I'm going to, I'm just going to focus on this and forget my family. And you see those horror stories and you've seen the statistics about the percentage of, 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 of businesses that fail within year one. And it's in the percent of marriages that fail because of, of one person going one way and just, just going down that and like, this is, I'm going to do this and I'll. I'll sacrifice whatever my family, if I have to, you know, get this done. So know yourself, know who you are truly and, and, and ask yourself some difficult questions because there are some of you that are listening like, yeah, you know what? I get what Cardiff's saying. I get what Tim's saying. And I, I got to do this for myself. I, I am that person. There's others like, oh, I don't know if you're in the, I don't know waffling, you know what? Maybe it's not right for you. And that's okay. Entrepreneur is, 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 it's, it's okay. You know, I'm in year one of this <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my, this is typically, I thought my job was hard. <laughs> Entrepreneurship is hard. And I have so much respect for the people that have succeeded in this field. Right. Well, let me ask you what, you know, you're, you're a busy person and, and how do you keep track of everything? Are you someone that keeps you know, a, a calendar, a, a marker board in, yeah. in, you know, in your office or, or your office at home. I mean, how do you keep track? Because I think a lot of people out there, that's one thing that they struggle with is how do I keep track of, I got to call this client, that client, I got to pick up the kid. I got to go, you know, go to the store. I got to, how, how do you keep track? I personally, I got a whiteboard that is always in front of me. And then Google Calendar. Um, I put everything <laughs> on Google, um, because it, I'm in front of it. I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen in October or November, December. Um, I'm always thinking forward. I challenge my coaching clients to begin to shape their 2018 goals. And all of them have done that. All of them have a plan for 2018. It's not 2018 yet. See the, the masses of the world. We'll wait till January 1st. Oh, what's my new year's resolution? What's my goal? That's not what leaders do. So personally, I lead by example for, if I'm going to ask my clients to do it, I'm going to, I better do it. Right. I better have my right. development plan done now because I've challenged them. Do your development plan for 2018, do it now. And so I always put it on the calendar. I, I'm always looking three, six months ahead getting myself prepared, knowing, okay, I've got to call this a person about, I've, I've got this podcast interview. I've got this pot. And, and, and there's sometimes, let me tell you this, Tim and listener, I've had podcasts go live without, you know, I, I give them a, I give them a nice freebie and, and, and the page, you know, the website doesn't work. I know. And I, I realized you can't get everything done. And then there's some things that are just, that just, you just have to be okay with it. And I thought being an entrepreneur, you had to be perfect, right? Everything had to be perfect because you're an entrepreneur because you're, you're on your island by yourself. You may have some help, but everything isn't perfect. And see, a lot of people wait for perfection before they even want to take that next step. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be okay with not perfection. You have to be okay with, you know what? Okay, landing page isn't ready. No big deal. It'll, it'll get up. And before I can tell you, I was on the opposite scale. I was like, no, I, you know, I would, I would get so upset, you know, Tim, because everything wasn't perfect. And then I've slowly transitioned to this. It will happen. Trust and move forward. Don't spend time on it. The right people for that, that listener, they'll, they'll find another show that you're on or they're listening to something else. Don't worry about it. So you have, and then here's the one thing I do to kind of keep me on pace. And, and I encourage every one of you listening to this to do this, but Sunday night is a critical night to planning the week. doesn't happen Monday morning. I sit down 
and I review my week. I wanted to get this done and this done. I wanted to develop the skill. How did I do? I have a one page PDF document that I've created for my clients. And actually it's a, it's a free resources, a free resource on my website where it'll, it'll give you a week in review. So you're going to sit down Sunday night and you're going to review the week. How did I do? What could I have done better? And get a sense of, okay, what do I need to sharpen this coming week and plan your week Sunday night? And I tell you what, that simple task alone, Tim, has, has put me, has, I get more done because I, I plan Sunday night, put it that way. Well, you've just offered some fantastic tips there. I mean, from using a whiteboard to Google Calendar to, you know, not being hung up on, on perfectionism and uh, and using Sunday as your day to reflect and, and to start planning. And, and those are just fantastic and, and powerful. Now, Cardiff, when did you realize that you had this entrepreneurial spirit? You know, it was when I was in the midst of writing the manuscript to the book. And I was listening to an episode on Entrepreneur on Fire. I heard a guy named Kerry Oberbrunner, and he was talking about the publishing industry. And what spoke my, or spiked my curiosity was the fact that here I was, I was writing a manuscript. I didn't know anything about the publishing industry. And here I was going to go in. It's kind of like starting entrepreneurship. and like, I was going to be an entrepreneur. Don't know anything about it, but I, I think I'm going to start. And so I got around him. I got around his fire. And then I got around people who have published their books. And I started to see how they're designing courses and how they've got coaching clients. And I, and I start to see other streams of income. And I, I, I had to like, kind of like take a, I'm like, can I do this? Here I am create, you know, writing my manuscript. I'm learning about the publishing industry how it works, what's going on. And I'm seeing other people. And so I get connected with, with some people that are, are, are ahead, of the, ahead of me. I was connected to um, an ex-vice president of a, of a major paper company. And he wrote a book on leadership. Wonderful, wonderful man. He's awesome. And so I, I had to call him. I'm like, hey, and I got around his fire. And then I started to see what he was doing. I'm like, okay. Maybe I, I don't have a lot of time, but maybe I can try to do this. And so what allowed me to propel myself into entrepreneurship, I have a, I have a company name now, Inspiration Insight. I got around others who are well ahead of me, but I was willing to learn and listen and to gain feedback, to gain understanding. And I remember I, w- I woke up one morning, I'm like, I, I can do this. I can, I can create a course. I can, I, I can launch a product. I can, I can get coaching clients. And I just knew from that point that this was my mission. This is what I was called to do. Well, that's a fantastic story. And now Cardiff, let's kind of shift a little bit and let's go into the, the dig round. You know, you, you are very busy and it's a lot of work in the beginning, getting your, you know, your, your side hustle or your just, you know, if it's your main thing going, how do you stay motivated daily? Oh, it starts in the morning. <laughs> and, you know, you, you know, like people say, well, it's your morning routine. I tell you what, the very first thing I wake up, I don't, I stay away from social media. I stay from, I stay away from news and I get centered uh, I'm a faith believer, so I'm in scripture. I read the Bible, uh, but then I read motivational things to just put fuel into my mind. I meditate, I stretch, and that's how I stay motivated. But there's also one other thing I, that keeps me going. It's my daughter. My my daughter's eight years old. She saw me launch a book, write a book, launch a book, right? In three years. It took me a little long, but three years. But the one thing she said to me, she said, Daddy, I want to write a book. I said, you know what? I think that'd be great. And now she, she loves to read. She's, she's reading all these different books. Like daddy, when can we write a book together? And I tell you what, that fuels me. That keeps the fire burning. And then last is I've asked my clients, what impact have I made on your lives today? Could you just send me a testimonial? 
reading these testimonials and I didn't ask for the, I mean, I did ask, but they were heartfelt testimonials of what, how I've helped them, how I've changed her perspective. And man, those three things fuel my tank and keep me going. Wow. Uh, you know, so many people just kind of back up a little bit, start their day and they jump in on, on the news and the news is so negative these days. And there's always some kind of t- catastrophe because that's what sells us, yeah. what get, brings people to, to read. And Amen. it just, yeah. for me, it, it just res- it gets into your brain. It kind of, you, you kind of have this, oh God, there's hurricanes coming. There's mm-hmm. you, you, earthquakes over here. There, you know, people, yes. planes going down. There's people being shot. There's the protests. Mm-hmm. It's like, Mm -hmm. you you know, you you start to, whether you consciously or unconsciously, you start to interpret that the world is just a crazy mess. And it kind of can set the mood for you throughout the day. And then you're kind of dragging your feet, your head's down. And I love what you said is that, you know, you kind of back off of that. You know, you don't go there. You, You use meditation, you know, when you stretch and you do that. That is such a wonderful tip for a lot of people out there. And I think that's one that I want to start incorporating because I noticed that kind of trend to me when I would start reading the news online, jump on the computer with my coffee and, and it just, it, it impacts us. And so I'm going to take that tip. Yeah, Tim, it does. And you see to get to where this place I'm at right now, I was on an online class and this goes about back uh, maybe three, four years ago. And the online, uh, the, the course director was saying, uh, I want you to dis- you, um, you know, course <laughs> attendee disconnect from media. And I'm like, media, social media, or and he was like, no, disconnect from all sorts of input from social media to news to radio. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I, I mean, because I, I was a news guy. I love the news. I was like, I want to know what's going on because that's what America, that's what the ma- masses want you to do. just, just jump into someone else's agenda first before you tackle yours, because that's what they want. And I went on this media cleanse for 30 days. Then I was 31. Then it was 32. And I'm like, well, I have to go back to social media, but I've, I've always stayed away from the news since then. Wow. I mean, do I know what's happening? I mean, my, my wife gives me updates, but I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I even had, I got to tell you this, dude. I had someone tell me I was unpatriotic because I didn't know, I didn't follow the news. And you know what? I'm like, well, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I got, that's fine. Yeah. I said, I'm still, I didn't beam up. I, I did I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't go in, a, in, a, in an extraterrestrial, you know, carrier. I'm still here. <laughs> I still am living and breathing, and my mind is so much clearer because I can focus on the things I want to focus instead of focusing on things that someone else wants me to focus on. Yeah, I love that. I love that. The, the only times that it, that I truly have, have get a break away from social media and, and the news is my, my wife is from Costa Rica, so we try to travel there every year, and and oh, when man. we go for a couple of weeks, you know, I, I really don't have access to to any of you know the, the news stations in the U.S. You know, it's all. You know, they're kind of local stuff and, and I don't watch that. So, you know, because I'm out enjoying nature. I'm surfing. I'm in the jungles. I'm, I'm doing this, doing that. And, and I don't have time. And, and I just I come back and I feel refreshed. And then it, it just I, I often know it hits me because when I get to the airport and then they all have the while you're waiting for your flight, then they have the news stations on. And I'm like. No, oh, I really didn't miss any of that crap, man. Oh. <laughs> You're right. Exactly. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the car crash, right? Yeah. And on a freeway, everybody's yeah. turning their heads to look, and all of a sudden it speeds up. Like, what? Right. That's exactly yeah, what yeah, they want you to sure. do because they need you to watch. They keep. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. Man. Stay away That's from great. the news. But anyway, let's move right along now. Now, Carl, yes. who do you look up to as a business leader? Yeah, so they're uh, basically, th- I call it three people. Uh, Darren Hardy, I really uh, enjoy um, all of his content. I read uh, Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. So he, he is a very successful, obviously, Success Magazine. Uh, Brendan Machard from just the mindset, um, high performance habits, uh, that I, I like him. And then my current coach, which is Carrie Overbrunner, uh, who is just a, a remarkable coach, uh, author, guy, um, leader, and those three people. Um, I basically look up to. Yeah. Now I'm interested in your answer to this next question because as an author, 
you need to choose one. You can only have one: Street Smarts or Book Smarts. Oh Which man! Which one is for you, Cardi? Oh man, you're making me choose only one. one. You can't split Ooh, it. Oh man! Yeah, don't be political. Gosh, choose book, one lane or the other. I'm a book Go left guy. Or right. He, man, one lane. Okay, and your listeners may not like this, but I'm a I'm a book guy, right? And here's what I do as I read the book, any book, and I read, I try, I try to read at least a book a month. I pick and I find one thing that I want to impact into the business, impact me personally, that I need to begin to do. I take one nugget away, one nugget, the books, you know, long book, big book, right? Any book, any size book. So if I had to pick a lane and you're forced me to pick a lane, Tim, you're for, and I don't like this. Forced choice. <laughs> I, I'm going to say book smart and uh, listeners are probably like, I can't know. I don't like it, but I like to pick one nugget and, and see how I can really use what they say in my life. I love that answer. Absolutely. But you know, it's interesting because that when I ask you know guests on the show and, and I get a variety of, of, of answers and, and a lot of times I'll have authors you know, even New York Times bestselling authors, and they'll say, "Oh, street smarts." You know, and I'm like, "What? What are you?" So, um, and then I have people who yeah. really, you know, they don't have the degrees, but then they'll say, you know, book smarts, or I mean, I just get a wide range. And then, you know, of course, an author like yourself, you know, and you and you give book smarts, and everyone has a, a really eloquent way of of explaining themselves. And you did a fantastic job, and and, and oh, thank you, you just brought so much energy to the show. We go on and on and on. However, we've we run out oh, of time, awesome. but before we go. Tell yes. the listeners the title of your book, where they can find it, yeah. where they can find you online, and all that great stuff. Awesome. So my title of my book is called Tide Turners with an S. Tide Turners with an S. You can head over to Barnes Noble, Amazon.com. Uh, definitely check it out. The If you're an Audible person, just hang with me. Audible version of Tide Turners where I do all of the reading. It's up for a portion where I have a special guest who is a female that does some of the reading. The audible version is tentatively, tentatively scheduled to come out next uh, in October, or it'll be coming out before 2018. So stay tuned for that. If you're an audible fan, you can go to all social media sites. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Cardiff D hall. So it's two F's C A R D I F F D hall, H A L L connect with me there. And I have developed this, awesome assessment and you'll get to, if you grab the book, you'll get to understand what a tie turner is, but I don't have enough time to explain that to you, but you're either a beach comber or you're a tie turner. You're either, again, let me say that again. You listener, you're either a beach comber or tie turner. And if you take this assessment, you will see who you are and where you are. And again, it's just an assessment. It just provides a baseline. To get that, head over to cardiffdhall.com forward slash Tim. Forward slash Tim. Cardiffdhall.com forward slash Tim. Take the assessment. See what's going on. You'll be given some resources to help elevate wherever you are. And you can connect with me that way as well. And if you just want to shoot me an email, it's cardiff at cardiffdhall.com. Cardiff. Thank you very much. It's been so much fun. I mean, you, you've been a blast. You brought so much energy and, and just inspiration and, and awesome tips to the show. And I can't thank you enough. And next time I'm up in Minnesota during the winter, we're going to go ice fishing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're going to do something that I haven't done, Tim. <laughs> so I welcome that opportunity to break out of my shell and, and break the cold, man. New for both those, uh, I, hey, but we're not going to yes, be afraid, but we're just going to do it. That's right. We don't know how to do it. We're just going to go out there and do it. Awesome. Thank you, Cardiff. I appreciate Thanks, it. Tim. And I look forward to staying in touch. You bet, man. Great. Thanks much. Want more entrepreneurial tips? Go to timlaskus.com. 